hello friends welcome uh, we are going to discuss the prospects of education proficiency in a subject nipun or the dakshi yog in a horoscope using krishnamurti paddhati or the kp astrology in my previous video i had already discussed the the usual rules that are laid down by professor krishnamurti regarding the prospects of education those you can refer to my previous video and you can have a look but in this video we are going to discuss the same thing education and proficiency in a subject but by using what i called as the multi pronged approach and so i am going to share some of my thoughts that how this multi pronged approach should be used for your own advantage so let's uh, let me start with this chart that belongs to donald trump the current us president the moment you are you are aware of the owner of the chart then certain biases starts emerging in your mind you know about the president trump's education or you know the general level of intelligence so you start making an assessment and with all these biases and prejudices on your mind but before you could you could make a final uh, uh, assessment i i said on oh, okay i made a mistake and this actually doesn't belong to this chart doesn't belong to trump it belongs to albert einstein now the moment i say this now your biases would take a dramatic shift and similarly you know i can say that this chart belongs to rahul gandhi so i'm not and i'm not trying to engage you in a blind chart test what i'm trying to say is that very often you know you get chart where you have no clue about uh, the name of the person or the status of the person and you have no idea and let's say you know you get a, cha a chart of a 5 year old kid and with a request from his or her parents about making an assessment about the education and the proficiency in a subject so what do you do how do you move forward and what are the uh, what is that method that can make you more confident that is what we are going to discuss in this video so let's look at the what i what is meant by the multi pronged approach this is a very simple example uh, of a multi pronged approach that is used in the medical science if a person let's say is has some heart condition and he or she visits uh, uh, the family uh, doctor then he or she might be advised to go through certain tests not only the one test certain test like the blood test or the ecg or the ultrasound or you know the mri or the ccta the idea behind running all these multiple tests is that it it helps the the doctor to have a more clear picture about the condition of the heart in the first place whether you know the particular person even has a heart condition or not so that's the first thing and second is that if that person has a high heart condition then whether it is a a, a low a moderate or elevated or very severe kind of heart condition so the multi pronged approach helps an expert or a specialist to assess a certain area of life and make him more confident about making a prediction the same thing we have to do in while judging a horoscope also while judging a horoscope we have to take a multi pronged approach for example when you are looking at the dhan yog in in krishnamurti paddhati you know normally 2 6 10 11 11 these houses will uh, will uh, give wealth or money to a person but then the degree of uh, wealth like i mentioned you know if somebody has a heart condition whether it's low or it's severe similarly dhan yog you know this dhan yog this is the jackie shroff bollywood star dhan yog versus mukesh ambani dhan yog they both might be having a strong 2 6 10 11 
but you can't compare this dhani yoga with the, this dhani yoga there is a, a a huge you know difference in the in the degree so when you take a multi pronged approach then you might be able to assess more in terms of uh, the uh, the scope or the degree or the strength so this is what is multi this is what i i i say as a multi pronged approach and now let's try to apply this to our unknown horoscope and try to find out the education and the strength of specialization in that horoscope so now we have this unknown chart right we have this unknown chart and we have a request from someone that uh, to assess this chart uh, from the education and the uh, specialization uh, point of view and we are going to uh, have a multi pronged approach so for multi pronged approach what i have done is or what is the use what i usually do is that i have a list of my own checklist of what points or what angle or what methods i have to use to judge a horoscope so i have laid down you know a list from 1 to maybe 9 10 whatever and i would normally prefer to analyze a chart for a specific uh, area from all these point of view so let's let's take you know the first uh, within the multi pronged approach let's take the first uh, rule kp rule right what is that the majority rule the majority rule is that if you are looking at whatever the education or the specialization or the dhan yoga or whatever you know if majority of the planets signify those houses that have something to do with that area of life then you can say that the particular yogas are strong in that horoscope so in this unknown uh, chart we are trying to judge the uh, the strength of the uh, the formal education for formal education we know that the house 4 9 you know these are the houses that would usually give a nice and uh, uh, good formal education without much issue so now if you look at each of these planets and if you try to look at if, what kind of signification they have for 4 9 11 so you know if you go for each of these planets you will see yeah there is fairly you know good number of planets that are representing or signifying 4 9 11 11 so you get this picture that okay this uh, uh, this this person the, the the owner of this chart will have a, a decent formal education okay but is this sufficient to uh, to make you confident about it so for that then what you have to do is you have to look at some other uh, methods also like you know the self significator or the cusp i have mentioned the cusp because in this horoscope we have a accurate time of birth so we can make use of the sublord of the cusp which are third fourth uh, and uh, ninth and all that that has that has a relationship with education and specialization so by applying our uh, first method we had this uh, impression on our mind that this chart seems you know fairly okay from the education point of view which is a formal education point of view now let's look at from the specialization or expertise you know point of view so we look at point number 2 right point number 2 is what a self significator what is a self significator self significator means when a planet doesn't is not occupied by any uh, means like n is is untenanted the star of a planet is untenanted then it's called a self significator what is meant by this if you look at this star lord column over here right so you see that all the planets ketu is there sun is there rahu is there moon is there mars venus and you will see that two planets are missing and what are those two planets one is mercury and second is jupiter so these are called as the self significator or untenanted right no planet is occupying their own star so these planets they become very powerful in giving the result of their own houses wherever the, the, the these planets are and the uh, the houses owned by these planets so now when we from step 1 when we came to the step 2 and then we said okay while judging the self significator this mercury and jupiter seems interesting to us 
right and let's uh, try to analyze further and see what this mercury and jupiter could possibly do now mercury and jupiter both are gyan karak okay so we say okay now apart from the formal education since these both planets mercury and jupiter they have appeared at the self significator and they are untenanted and they are both gyan karak so it might be that this person could have some chance in life to uh, have some uh, some degree of specialization or domain knowledge okay now how do we know that mercury and jupiter is gyan karak because you have to study the old astrology or the parashari system you know so that's why i i always recommend that do not straight away jump into the kp krishnamurti system first get some knowledge from the old astrology the traditional parashari system that would be helpful for you so now when we start looking at the mercury and jupiter and we know that this chart the time of birth in this chart is accurate and we, we can rely on the uh, sublord of the cusp then we start looking at the uh, the cusp and the sublord so we find that mercury appears over here second in third then in the sixth also in the ninth also in the eleventh also and then mercury is appearing in this uh, the star lord column of the cusp right over here also then in the third so now we see that there is a certain uh, abundance of mercury in this chart and mercury seems to be very very strong it's not a normal usual mercury it seems to be very strong it is a self significator untenanted and it is appearing in the uh, as the star lord and the sub lord in the third cusp and it is appearing as the sub lord in the ninth cusp and also in the 11th cusp and then in the sixth cusp okay so th this should catch our attention this should uh, this should uh, tell us to to take a notice and look at what you know mercury could do now let's look at the uh, what mercury could do see if, even if you don't have a accurate birth chart then you know that mercury and jupiter are untenanted and they are self significator and if you study both the jupiter and mercury in this chart in this chart alone the so in this uh, table of significators alone because you are not sure about the birth time so you are bound to ignore the cusp chart is the cusp uh, significator list so even in this chart if you look at jupiter then you say okay jupiter seems to be okay not bad 3 8 12 5 8 10 from the education point of view these are not bad bad houses because 8000 8, 12000 they indicate research if you if you refer to my last video you know or if you refer to krishmurti books or even if you refer to the old parashari system you will find that the 8th and the 12th house they represent some kind of a research and so for the uh, for specialization research is required even if it is not a formal research but a mindset to do some kind of a research is required so and jupiter becomes you know very powerful by being in the 8th house and it is the lord of the 12th uh, cusp so you say lord of the 12th cusp is signifying the 8th house so at least from the education point of view and then jupiter is also you know the lord of the third house third house indicates the uh, the area of specialization or the interest in uh, specialization specializing a subject so by combining all these things you say yeah jupiter seems you know pretty well placed for uh, providing some yogas in terms of specialization to this person now let let's focus on mercury because we have seen that mercury you know appears at so many places in this uh, cusp chart now mercury you will see is in the star of rahu which is in the fifth house fifth house is a very good house from the education point of view because it is the house of intelligence it makes a person very intelligent in a in a in a, in a certain area of his or her liking and then rahu represents uh, uh, the, the uh, rahu also represents the sixth house and the ninth house both of these houses are very good ninth house is very good and then at the sub level also you see that the mercury is in the sub of rahu which again indicates this and mercury is a self significator so this is very strong this 6 and 9 is not a first level uh, significance over here this this is a strongest level of significance because mercury is a self significator 
so and mercury here is in the ninth house okay so mercury is a very powerful thing so you have to combine all these factors together when you are doing a multi-pronged approach then you say okay let me you know apply some more uh, different uh, method because i see that this person might have some good specialization and there are plenty of yoga mercury looks promising then what do you do you move on to some more methods like you know i usually uh, make use of uh, Bhaskaran's approach or the four step also and why I do this is because both the Bhaskaran four step they are derivative of the Krishnamurti Paddhati they don't make a very serious departure from the uh, Krishnamurti Paddhati itself and so they just evolved out of the Krishnamurti Paddhati and why they have evolved they have evolved because just the basic steps of Krishnamurti Paddhati are not sufficient like you know just the basic blood test is not sufficient to predict whether you know a person has a heart condition or not similarly you know the just the bare minimum basic steps in Krishnamurti Paddhati are usually not sufficient that's why these intelligent people like Bhaskaran or uh, the uh, the Mohan they 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 came forward uh, and uh, with you know their own uh, set of new findings so there is no harm in uh, making use of these uh, new findings this is going to uh, benefit you so i make use of bhaskaran's uh, basic approach now for all these things obviously you have to uh, find out that what you know bhaskaran's approach is four step uh, i have already created a couple of videos so uh, you can refer to those videos and you can have a look at what you know the uh, four step is and quickly you know if you look at the four step as a part of my multi-pronged approach I am trying to look at this chart from the four step point of view, especially the Mercury. Then I say, okay, Mercury is in the uh, sub of Rahu and Rahu is in the star of Mars. So Mars again indicates, you know, 4, 9, 11. So this makes me more confident that this Mercury seems to be just simply out of this world in this horoscope and it seems to be very strong, very strongly connected with third and ninth house. This is the A++ grade kind of a, a, a significator indicating some area of specialization, a high level of specialization in this chart. So this is how you make yourself confident. Then apart from this, sometimes I also make use of Navansh also. The, the whole Navansh thing is still in progress and uh, unless and until I have some more confidence that things are working in the Navansh, until that time I am not going to create a video and I am not going to share you know, my thoughts on Navansh. But sometimes you know you have your own very personal kind of a finding that you don't want to make public for whatever reason you don't want to make public because you don't want to share that or sometimes you are not sure you say i'm not sure so i will not make it public unless you know i become very sure about it and so this these points like you know a nine point ten point or eleven whatever you know some of these things are all belongs to your own finding your own research and that comes by looking at chart and gaining some experience so these are all the these all steps become a part of the multi-pronged approach so by applying all these uh, uh, various uh, uh, multi-pronged uh, uh, approach rules so uh, uh, we analyzed that the mercury seems very strong in this horoscope and we are now sure by applying four step and bhaskaran method which i have not discussed and um, namansh method also which i have not discussed so we say okay now we are confident and we can say that this chart in this chart this particular uh, person must have some area of specialization so what we do we then write our finding this is our personal finding you know you are not sharing with your client but you say okay my notes what are my notes my notes are this there's something ex exceptional about mercury you know you just write it for your own purpose you're not sharing it with your client but it is just your internal notes and, uh, 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 and that would be helpful to for your uh, uh, later you know in gain of your experience and all that now comes the question of what kind of subject or what kind of uh, domain knowledge or area specialization this person might have now this is where you know you will really need some experience uh, old astrology parashari astrology whatever as many books you can read as many horoscope you can see you know now you, since now the multi-pronged approach has made you confident that this is this horoscope belongs to a person who might have some very good area specialization but what 
So mercury indicates, usually it indicates mathematics, it in, makes a person, you know, an astrologer also, as someone who is very good in accounts, somebody who can become a data scientist or in astronomy. So where do you get all these things? You can find these things in Krishnamurti's books or in some other, you know, books also. And I, I'm not sure if there is a ready reckoner available on the web. There might be, if you make a search, you could find one. And so, and the next question that should come to your mind is that what about, you know, Mercury is since very strongly connected to the ninth house. The ninth house indica indicates a religion also. So is this person going to become a religious preacher or it's going to devote all his time into uh, uh, in promoting some temple or some spiritual organization, you know, those kind of things. This is where, you know, then you have to judge between and uh, the what are the natural karak for spiritual uh, spirituality and becoming a preacher for religion and all that you find that this is that is jupiter that also comes because you have read about it then you find that jupiter is not as powerful as mercury when it comes to the ninth house so then you conclude that this person might have a specialization in one of these you know fields and so now, when you are ready to uh, talk to your client, what do you do? You point out that that uh, about uh, the the Mercury thing in this horoscope, and you tell your client that Mercury is exceptionally powerful, and it can make a person very good in accounts. A very good means exceptionally good, an area of expertise, a very high level of expertise, and this is what you bring to your client's knowledge. And sometimes, you know, you find client who are equally interested in astrology so they would be interested in uh, in uh, talking to you in a more technical term so you can explain you know whatever your findings are and otherwise you know uh, if your client uh, uh, doesn't have that much of uh, technical knowledge about the astrology then you can just assure him or her that your multi-pronged approach has given you this confidence that this person or this horoscope definitely has very powerful yogas of specialization and a domain knowledge and this, this person should be known for his domain knowledge or area of specialization so we discuss all these chart now you might be thinking whose chart it is so what we were discussing was the shri ks Krishmurti's own chart so that's all uh, uh, in this video i hope uh, you enjoyed watching